Thank you for joining for Devos. Okay, all this week, we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that's heaven. Now look here, the rainbow around the throne. I preached about this this past weekend. Okay, we got to look at this verse every day. Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, when you get to heaven, you're going to see this. And a lot of people don't know this. This is something cool. Maybe you never learned about heaven. There was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. So when you're looking at the throne where the Lord Jesus Christ is, uh, and imagine this green rainbow. As you know, on earth, rainbows aren't green, okay? But in heaven they are. And yesterday, I talked about being a, a, a rainbow of grace. Okay, let's look at how beautiful things we have. We didn't earn heaven. We didn't work for heaven. Salvation is free, but you must believe. And when you believe upon Jesus, you follow him. Look, if you want to see the rainbow, you have to put up with the rain. That's an old saying. Okay, but there's truth there, right? If you want to see the rainbow upon the earth, then you got to put up with the storm, right? So bigger the storm, bigger the rainbow. I, I, I've told the story when we were flying with our son down uh, to Florida. Uh, Randy was going down there. To, he wanted to go from heaven Florida to heaven, and we we had flew all through these storms. Okay, the one part of this very long trip in this little plane, there was a rainbow beside our plane for about forty five minutes, and we couldn't outfly the rainbow. It was it was as if it was traveling with us. And my son, the pilot, said, "I've never seen anything like this." Okay, God does some miraculous things. So he did put the rainbow upon the earth after Noah's flood saying he would never destroy the earth again. And when we get to heaven, the rainbow's letting us know this is all new. Judgment is all behind us. Look, the secret to the rainbow is in the clouds. You know, some people right now are going through some bad times. And you're like, wow, life is so frustrating. It's hard today just paying your bills, being a mom, a dad, trying to keep up with the rat race. <laughs> you know, and in the end, you end up being a rat, right? Okay, you don't want to participate in the rat race. But listen, I think some of you that are listening to my devotions, you've got your eyes on the wrong things. I'm just telling you, you want to keep your eyes upon eternity. I want you to see the end at the very beginning. Everything I do and anything I get discouraged with, I think, you know, one day we're all going to be in heaven and all our stress and all our problems are going to be behind us. But you see, the devil doesn't want you thinking like that. He wants to keep you miserable and unhappy, having a bad testimony. Look here, Hebrews 12, 22. This, one day, this is going to be us. We're going to be in the kingdom. It says, but you have come into Mount Zion to the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable angels in a festal gathering. Could, could you imagine being in heaven where there are so many angelic beings? It says we can't even count them as, as human beings. I mean, not only, not only are there billions of believers from over the years, since the beginning of time, but also there's going to be angels there. And we're going to go to the holy city of God to honor God and to worship him. There's no excuse for Christians to stay discouraged. Now, I mean that. So if you're walking by faith, if you think about heaven and you think that you're saved by grace, I, I got news for you. I don't know how you think. God owes me nothing. I deserve nothing. I, I, it's hard for me to even grasp that he has done all these wonderful things in eternity. And the rainbow around the throne lets you know all the bad stuff's behind Look in uh, John 14, 2. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again. I'm going to take you to myself. And that where I am, you're going to be right there with me. I like it. God has a place, a special home for you in heaven. Imagine a dwelling place where you can just sit in front of the big window. And look out over the kingdom. How awesome will that be? Eternal life does not begin when you get to heaven. It begins when you place your faith in Christ. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to praise God that you have eternal life. I want you to thank him today for everything he has in store for you because we're going to live there for all eternity.
eternity and all these problems are going to be behind us.